What's going on, everybody? I'm back for the December 9th Saturday slate. Uh, took last night off. Made some uh, some killer New England clam chowder. Very good. Watched some Mine Hunter. Got my mind right. Really gotta get in there with the old serial killers to get my DFS game right. But now, laser focused. A uh, big slate tonight, actually, for the Saturday. They only have the two early games, so we still got eight games. I think that's perfect. Lots of weird injuries right now and guys out, so there's some bizarre uh, value plays. So let's just dive in. Um, we've got... Is this recording? Ha! Huh, there it is. First mistake, and I'm what? 45 seconds in? Love it. Uh, Hornets and Lakers. Hornets at home. 109 implied total, which is third in the late slate. Um, they're five-point favorites, and I think there's a lot in play here. Uh, I think Kemba is in play. I think Batum is in play. I think Marvin Williams is in play. I think Dwight may be in play. Um, MKG is in play on DraftKings. I'm assuming... Um, break this down so I could look at it a little bit easier. So right now we're assuming no Frank Kaminsky. Um, I think that's really the only way to go about it for right now at least. But let's grab the Hornets um, shot profile and we'll dig in a little bit more. That didn't get refreshed yet. Oh, don't have those games filtered out. That makes sense. 3.30 and 6 o'clock. Much better. This could be a pretty good f fantasy game. I'm anxious to see how this looks. Whew, it's going to be tough not to like Dwight. Let me get the short list up. Obviously, I'm not prepared for any of this. It's weird taking a night off. I feel like I haven't seen any basketball in, like, weeks, and it's been... 24 hours. I just feel so lost when I break out of my normal system of like recording these things at 6 o'clock in the morning instead of 10.30 a.m. I feel like I've wasted the day already. So yeah, I definitely want to look at Dwight. Um, I have no idea how this is going to shake out. And then I think Kemba Doesn't really feel like a Batum night any longer. Now that I look at that shot profile, it might not fit him perfectly. Um, I think that's probably it. Kembro Walker, yeah, classic, classic NBA point guard Kembro Walker. Let's check out the Lakers now. Uh, I forgot to put anything in that coffee. I wasn't ready for it. It's just like the the remnants of whatever I had in it beforehand. Ugh. Okay. Um, let's see. So Lakers have a 104 implied total. That's seventh on the night, which is still pretty good. Um, offensively, this looks like a, a decent matchup for them. I think Lonzo needs a look for sure. And I like the idea of KCP's additional minutes. And I always like finding a nice mid tier shooting guard. I just can't trust the Nance, Kuzma, uh, Randall trifecta right now. This doesn't really feel like the best Brandon Ingram game either. All right, so let's like take a look at that breakdown. So Charlotte, Kemba needs 43 which he's done twice in his last three since he's been back from injury, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable there. Lakers aren't exactly locking anybody down. And then Dwight needs 
39. <laughs> Had a big one uh, last night, evidently. Um, I have seen nothing from last night, like literally zero. So this might be a bit of a learning experience. Um, why am I not seeing it? There it is. Okay, I went to OT. But Dwight did, whoo, 25 and 20. I'll be damned. That's not a bad Dwight game. It is interesting they're on the back-to-back. -back. It sort of makes me lean to the Lakers a little bit more. But, you know, being at home helps that. Um, I still like Dwight. I still like Kemba. Not, nothing's changed there. Although, you know, Dwight is a little scary. But right now, with Frank out, and with uh, Cody Zeller out, you know, you got to lean on him a little bit. And then for the Lakers, KCP at 5,900, so he needs 30. He's been there twice in his last five, but it was the two furthest away games. I'll keep it, but it's not my favorite any longer. And then Lonzo, obviously a big one two nights ago needs 35 um i'm comfortable there yeah i'll stick with what i've got that's not bad it's a game you're gonna want a part of for sure we'll go to uh atlanta and orlando this one kind of interesting i guess but not for the atlanta piece <laughs> um Atlanta with a 107.75 implied total. What, is this real? Are the Atlanta Hawks really four-point favorites? Is that how bad the Magic are? Or did I type that in wrong? I guess with Aaron Gordon out, it changes things. Yeah, holy shit, they are four-and-a-half-point favorites. That's amazing. Okay, so... I think the only thing we could really look at here are the guys that are going to be getting the big minutes for Atlanta, which would be Schroeder, Bazemore, and Prince. Um, and then on DK, I think that you can look at Tyler Cavanaugh as a punt. That would be my um, quick pass at this. No um, no Aaron Gordon tonight. No Jonathan Isaac. So there's going to be some interesting uh, front court plays for the Magic. Could be fun to have some real weird dudes tonight. It might be a fire up Mo Spates day. Okay, so we're looking at the top three. Prince Schroeder, Bays. And I'll look at Bembry, I guess. I'm willing to take a peek at all of them. I feel like I'm not going to be on Schroeder. But we'll look. So Schroeder needs 41. He's done that twice in his last six couple high 30 game well one high 30 game but he's been there no reason to suspect that the magic are going to put him on lockdown and normally against orlando he just played okay but this was at a time when uh his salary was a lot lower so Because of the game, because of the fourth highest implied total, I, you know, I'll stay there, but he's pretty costly. How the, how the hell do you spell that shit? Okay, um, Prince needs 26, which he's done basically three times in his last six. Oh, that's the wrong price. I need 28. That seems oddly high. Don't. 
I don't trust that one. I don't like it. Baysmore needs 26, 27, 27. Um, not really there. Once in his last whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pass. It might be something I look at a little bit further down the road, but right now I don't I don't trust it. They don't really perform the way they should on the court. Like where's Prince? Yeah, like his minutes per game stuff isn't very good or his points per minute isn't very good. And then who was the other one? Bazemore. Bazemore's a little bit more realistic. But he's not doing it on the court. Like for him to get to 27, I, I mean he didn't even do it in 36 minutes three nights ago. Dude plays 30 minutes and just doesn't fill it out. He might tonight. It's a good matchup, but that's not where I'm going to start now. Orlando, on the other hand. Going to be a weird one here. Very weird. So, this is my first stab at the minutes. It's going to be important to get news on this game. And starters will be very important. But Mo Spates is uh like he's, he's pretty much gotta play <laughs> it sucks that he's at center on FanDuel um, being able to get him as a power forward as well at 100 more than minimum salary on DK that is a spot where like you pretty much have to play most space he'll unlock a bunch of good good stuff you know like a he'll allow you to get hardened and brawn or something if you go with spades and one of the other guys that are going to be minimum salary fillers tonight um, let's take a look at the other, like the steady guys for Orlando, because I tend to think that's the best place to get benefit when stuff like this happens. Um, you know, when Gordon's out, like how does that impact Jonathan Simmons? You know, is he gonna, is he gonna try to take over type stuff? It feels like a really good Alfred Payton night. Um, we'll find out. Okay, so who bombs threes? We want Vooch? Sure. Oh, God, this is fucking in reverse of what I would have wanted. Spates looks great. I love it. This is going to be fun. It's going to be so great cheering on Mo Spates tonight. He puts up four fantasy points or something. Okay, so of the top three guys... I don't want any of them. <laughs> Atlanta gives up so many corner threes. I think Aaron Aflalo looks like an interesting um, punt play tonight. 35 minimum salary on FanDuel. Could be real fun in a, in a GPP. Yeah, I'm going to look at Vooch. I'm going to pass on Alfred Payton, I think. Well, maybe not. Let's see how he's been playing. Payton needs 40. He has not done that in a hot minute. He's done it twice in his last... Oh my god, they play so many games. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's done it twice in his last 9 how does he normally respond to uh, playing Atlanta? Didn't play well earlier this year, so I'm going to skip out on him. Jonathan Simmons needs 30. That seems like to be his upper limit. Yeah, I'm, I don't like Simmons. Vooch at 85 means he needs 42. Um, he's been playing really well. He's had over 50 in three of his last four. Let's let's see if we could ride that out. Um, how did he do earlier this season against Atlanta? Yeah, put the fucking smackdown on him. Oh, and by earlier this season, I mean three nights ago. <laughs> It doesn't matter because I'm going to end up having most baits anyway, which sucks, but, you know. Vooch looks good, and if you can pay up, go ahead. Um, that's a game where I feel like I should have gotten more out of. 
it's going to be important to get the news. When we can find out if Spates is going to start or like if Wesley Owundu is going to get 28 minutes or something, it'll be helpful. Now on to the Bulls. Uh, Bulls 99 implied total. It is 13th on the night. And uh, Markkinen's price drop on DK or something? Holy hell. Uh, fire up Markkinen on DK for sure. 5,500. Nope, that's not how you spell Bulls. Bulls are hosting the Knicks. They are three-point underdogs, which is just amazing. It's a game I don't want to see a single second of. Well, Adrian Payne available to play. He's going to get minutes, right? Like, a lot of them. We just touched on this. This is the only reason I'm going to it now. I mean, Adrian Payne might start. <sighs> yeah, like... He had a broken hand, so it's not like he's coming, like, it's not a muscle injury that they're worried about tweaking, like, he can just play. Keep an eye on that. Adrian Payne's going to look pretty decent, I think, if we get a little bit more news. I think he's going to end up being in play. Oh, it As like a punt option, not like a must start type guy. Let's be clear here. I don't imagine wanting any part of the Bulls, but someone always pops up. Yep, there's the old uh, Justin Holiday, Denzel Valentine look. Yeah, and marketing. Okay, let's look at them. Um, Holiday is at 5,700, so that's like 28. Got there last night, you know, OT helped. Been right around there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Take a look at Justin Holiday. Valentine needs 26. Um, he did not get there last night. I'm going to avoid that, so tonight's probably his night. And then Markinen needs 32. Got there last night, OT helps. He's been down and steady. Not the place I need to get a bunch of guys, but Justin Holiday will get a look. Let's move to the Knicks. Man, I'm feel, I feel like I'm not even going through this stuff correctly. It just feels weird doing it four hours later than I normally do. It's screwing with my head. Nope. All right, if you're playing the drinking game, I typed in the wrong team to start, so have your first shot at 10.54 a.m. Knew that was going to happen. Ooh, it might be a Porzingis night or a Dougie McBuckets night. Is he really minimum salary? Okay. Yeah, we'll look at Porzingis and we'll look at McBuckets. Porzingis needs 45. Um, put up 29 in his first game back. That's going to be a bit of a stretch, but let's see. Who guards him on the Knicks? Or, yeah, who guards him on the Bulls, rather? So that's like Portis and Miritich. Oh my god, yeah, Porzingis. I like Porzingis tonight. That's a an oddly good matchup, I think. Could be a nice nice way for him to get back on the saddle. And then yeah, Mc, McBuckets, if he gets 26 minutes, what does he need? He needs 16, 17? What's he been doing? Okay, he's just been doing that, so never mind on McBuckets. Um, you know, I would get... I would understand wanting to go with Cantor, but that's that's not for me. I don't see anything else here that jumps out of the, off the page. So let's go to the Cavs. Um, the Cavs are 
112.75 implied total. It's second on the night. They are seven and a half point favorites at home against the Sixers, and the Sixers are not playing Joel Embiid. So something to keep in mind. Um, I didn't. I haven't seen anything on Trevor Booker, but I assume that he's not playing tonight. But if he does, it's not. I'd be surprised if they just threw him in there. This seems like it would be more Amir Johnson and Rashawn Holmes until they can get him in and integrated. Um, so we're looking at Braun, who's at 12,000. I mean, you know the drill. You know who we're looking at on the Cavs. Really looking to roster Chetty Osman tonight. Said no one ever. How many guys would... They would have to have like a crazy rash of the flu for Chetty Osmond to get like 25 minutes. Okay, so I think this is a Dwayne Wade game, maybe. And then we need to look at Braun. Um, not really. Yeah, I guess we could look at Love as well, but it might not be worth the time. Braun needs 60. I mean, uh, who are we kidding? I'll say this, though. What's his, what has he done against Philly? They played recently, didn't they? I feel like Embiid sat out that one, too. I don't know. I could be making that up. Nope, not Atlanta. Philly. Okay, so we went for 52. It's, it's fine. It's LeBron. We'll see how it shakes out later. He's not a no play, put it that way. Okay, Wade needs something ridiculous, right? Yeah, 30. So he hasn't done it in his last two, but he did it in five straight before that. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that. It's really weird to me that I could naturally type Dwayne Wade's name correctly. But, like, if you had another guy that spelled Dwayne, like, fucking correctly, I'd probably get that wrong. It's just so weird. Uh, I'm assuming Tristan Thompson plays tonight, but that might not be the best assumption. But it's also not changing anything, really. Just you bump up, like, Channing Fry's minutes and Chetty Osmond plays, like, six minutes, and that's it. So, I, I think it's just Braun here, and then, you know, Wade, if that works out, um, we'll see. Now, Philly, on the other hand, is going to be interesting. I think that in, I think that uh, Ben Simmons is going to be pretty good. Um, although, he laid an egg in that game against Braun, right? Yeah. Went for 30. He's going to want to be better than that, <laughs> I think. Um... So we want to look at Covington and Simmons. And then I think we want to look at Amir Johnson and Rashawn Holmes. I'm excited for tonight. I think it's going to be, with some of these injuries, it's really going to open up some weird-ass lineups. And I think we'll have the opportunity to see some uniqueness. I think... I haven't, obviously I have not looked at this yet, but it seems to me like James Harden is going to be crazily owned, but I don't know yet. Okay, so, yeah, I want to look at Bobby Covington. Um, Simmons scares me a little bit. I don't know why. And, uh, yeah, we want to look at Redick and Saric, I guess. Those top four. And then, you know, Amir and Rashawn Holmes are sort of just in play because of circumstance and the Sixers have a 105-25 implied total at 6th on the night that's a really good spot for them um, so Bobby Covington needs 35 he's done that in 2 of his last 3 it's a tricky spot for him I actually like him better with Embiid on the court um, just from a spacing perspective so I don't think I'm going to go that direction Simmons needs 52. He's been in that area the last two, two 55 plus point games. Um, his worst game in this last six game stretch is actually the game in Cleveland. I'm okay with it. 
And then Rashawn Holmes and Amir Johnson. Holmes at 43. Last time Embiid sat, they both played just over 20 minutes. Amir is the one that went off. And with Amir being a power forward, like, if we know that Mo Spates is going to get 20 plus minutes, then you want Mo Spates at minimum salary at center over Rashawn Holmes. But I think Amir at power forward at minimum salary is worth the peak. Saric needs 32. Last time Embiid was out, he put up 34 in 35 minutes. Um, no reason to think that he wouldn't be a good play tonight. All right, to the Bucks and Jazz. Blech. Who cares? Bucks, 100.75 implied total, 12th on the night. They are 2.5 point favorites at home against the Jazz. Um, you know, we're looking at Bledsoe, Middleton, Giannis. That's it. Everybody knows what's going on here. I've got the uh, projection sheet on my website um, ready to go for DraftKings. We're going to finish up FanDuel later today, and then we'll be able to make the move from uh, the Google Sheet into my website. And then I'm going to work on the, the Excel template that people can use as well. So, Giannis, sure. Middleton, though, is going to be my guy, I think. Giannis is at 12. He needs 60. I mean, it's you're not going to be upset about it. Man, I could type that without having to look. That makes me happy. Um, given the uh, given the choices, I would probably take LeBron over Giannis. But Giannis looks really good on DK. Now, Middleton, the one that I care about the most, 37. Where did everything go? Okay. So he's been right under 37 the last two, and he's gone over that twice in his last five. I'm fine with it. Bledsoe needs 35 as well. He's been over 35. One, two, three, four, five out of his last seven. I don't have any problem going Bledsoe as well. There's no way I end up with three Milwaukee guys. Right now I'd say that I'd get one of the Middleton Bledsoe crew. Um, probably Bledsoe. Middleton doesn't necessarily have the best value at his salary. So it could be Bledsoe. I don't think Middleton will pop when I run the optimizer. <clears throat> now to the Jazz. Um, the assumption is that Rodney Hood is not playing. What else is new? I'm anxious to see who gets to the rack the most on the Jazz. Um, the, the Bucks are atrocious at defending the rim. Rudy. Ah, so many centers that I'd be interested in playing that just can't get played tonight. Price is tumbling, too. Okay, so... <clears throat> Did Donovan Mitchell's price, like, not move or go down or something? I don't even know what position he plays. Shooting guard. Yeah, he went down $100. So he needs 37, which he has done three of his last four. Uh, yeah, I, why not, Donovan Mitchell? And then maybe Favors needs 25. When did Gobert come back? It's 
So he hasn't really been there since Gobert come back, came back. They have about 98.25 implied total, 15th on the night. I think that's probably going to end my uh, infatuation with the Jazz. So let's go to the Grizzlies and uh, who cares. 96.25 implied total. That is last on the night. No surprises there. Mario Chalmers has seen his minutes tick back up, or has seen his minutes go down. Um, Andrew Harrison starting to get minutes. He might be the worst offensive player in the league. Uh, don't take him. I'm, I guess if you want to get weird on DK, you can, but he's just really not good at uh, offensive basketball. So uh, it's Jamichael Green, it's Mark Gasol, it's Tyreek Evans. It's not appealing. I'll tell you what, the Thunder offense is atrocious. Speaking of the Thunder offense, let me let me highlight something for Ben Falk here, just what he needs me to talk about something. So, whatever night I played Paul George, the night before that he didn't play, um, I was complaining about <clears throat> the, uh, the Thunder's offense down the stretch, where they just kept running the same set over and over and over again. Turns out... They've been running this Hawk set, and Ben Falk did a, a, an article on it like the next day with, why does it say I'm not logged in? He does a full breakdown with like slow-mo videos of every one of those sets down the stretch. And it made me think, like I thought it was awful that they were running this set because I had Paul George and he was not like the benefactor of it in most of these um, most of these videos. And in two of the videos, you can see that Paul George is open with a look to the basket on his initial move. Um, I'd have to find it here. Yeah, so you, you'll be able to see it here. So Green's got a mismatch, and when he comes to start the set, he ends up being open. Oh, that's not the one. He ends up being open, but he's just not looking for the ball because he's so used to just coming around that hook. So I think I hated it so much because uh, I wanted Paul George to be getting the ball because I had him in that particular game. I, but I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird to think about that this article came out. So I highly recommend it. Very detailed on the offense that uh, or this particular set. The Thunder seem to be running a lot when the with three studs are on the court. And I use that term studs very loosely when it comes to talking about mellow. But anyway, uh, that's the articles and the detail that uh, that Ben Falk like manages. It's just amazing. It really helps with learning the game. I don't know much about basketball at a high level, and um, it makes it cool to see that sort of stuff. Because I spotted it while I was watching it. I just thought it was shit. <laughs> he was talking about how it's going to be like their new set for those three. So what the hell do I know? Okay, so we want to look at Jamichael. We want to look at those top three guys. Yeah. So let's do Tyreek needs 36. He's done that in three of his last four in a big way in two of those. Um, that was those two were without Chandler Parsons, which is interesting. I mean, this is not going to be a guy that I use, but from, I, I would imagine, it's just he's in a price quagmire there. Uh, but he looks good. So it's hard to just chew him away. Uh, Jermichael Green at 53, so we need 26. Done it in two of his last four, but the last two were stinkers, so I'll pass. And then Gasol needs 42 and a half. Hasn't been there really, but did put up two in his last five. Um, he's going to have to deal with Adams, maybe a little bit of Patrick Patterson, so I'm going to pass there. OKC, on the other hand, I'll always pick the wrong one. So clearly we need to look at Russ and George and Anthony. Um, Steven Adams is fine, but 
Not tonight. Not with the center options that are out there. It's just a slog of a game. Ooh, 11-11. Make a wish. Anytime I think about that, I always immediately say I wish I was a little bit taller. And I always hate myself for not making an actual wish. Every time. I can't get it out of my head. It's like a trigger now. Okay, so Rush and Russ and Paul George we're going to look at. Russ is 10-8. That's down, is it not? Or am I crazy? Or am I just used to his salary being up? Yeah, he's down from 11-5. Ooh, ooh. Um... 101.25 implied total. That's 11th. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I don't. So we had Bledsoe and then Campbell, Lonzo, Schroeder. So it's nice to get a top, <clears throat> top flight point guard in there. Is he. How big is the gap there right now? Because that'll be the telltale sign. Not that huge. Yeah, Harden for sure. Harden's going to be must-owned. That's really the only place with a huge gap, so Harden's going to pop big time when we run through this. Let's look at George, and let's look at Mello. George needs 39. He can get there. I don't... That's not the one for me, I don't think... And then Mello needing, um, 34? Yeah, I'm gonna, this would just be Rust for me just because of this game. And we go to Phoenix. 98.75 implied total, 14th on the night. Not really a sexy play. They've got... They're heading to their home for San Antonio. Spurs are seven point favorites. Um, without any news on the big men sitch in Phoenix, I think you have to avoid all of Monroe, Chandler, and Len, no matter what. Um, and it's hard. Obviously, Booker is out, so you lose like the best fantasy player on that team. TJ Warren's price is still uh, too healthy, in my opinion, for his ability to be rostered on FanDuel. I haven't looked at it yet on DraftKings to see if it's still low. Let's find out. So his salary on DraftKings is 6700 So he's in play on DraftKings, but not on FanDuel. <sighs> he's in a good spot, too, actually. Um, Tyler Eulis is at 5,100, which is a little scary, but I will take a look there. So let's do that. Eulis needs 25, which he did in the last, or he came close in the last one. Put up 30 a couple nights ago. I think that's probably too expensive for Tyler Eulis. I'd have trouble saying TJ Warren gets to 40, so I think that the Suns are a pass. U Ulyss for 4,300 on DK is more in play. And then the Spurs. So no, this this is another one where we're going to need news. Um, I took a big time shot in the dark on some of their minutes. Uh, no Ginobili, no Pau Gasol. Um, obviously Kyle Anderson is out. Kawhi is not back. Um, he's per Woj. He's looking to be back on Tuesday. So there's a bunch of dudes on the Spurs that are going to be getting minutes that aren't really good, like normal options. Um, so this might, like, you might. We're going to need to look at Bryn Forbes. I think we're going to need to look at Patty Mills, Aldridge, and Gay. It, it, they're all in play right now. Rudy Gay at 5,500. I'm, I'm not even going to go any further. He's just in play. Aldridge needs 41. 
hasn't done it in his last three. Hasn't done it in his last four either. Um, doesn't really feel like the spot for me. I'm nerve like until we know a little bit more about where these minutes go, like Bertans and uh, King Joffrey could be in play right now. It's just not enough minutes for me. Bryn Forbes at minimum salary. If he does get 30, like I have him in here for, it's you kind of have to take a look at him. So I will load that up. And um, I want to see how ridiculous this looks. Are they like crazy, crazy value? Eh, I'll look at it later. Um, Patty Mills at 4,000. So he needs 20. He's in and around there every night. Um, I'm gonna. I've got him projected for 23. Does that fit? It feels high to me. I'm fine with it. Yeah, let's look at Patty Mills. And then the last game on the night is uh, gonna be an interesting one. It's always weird to get to have the last game of the night alone. That's gonna be uh, heavily owned. We've got Portland and Houston. Um, the Rockets are 10-point favorites in Portland. Uh, Portland has a 103.5 implied total, which is eighth. And uh, Yusuf Nurkic is out. So we should expect to see more minutes to Ed Davis and Noah Vonley and uh, you know maybe Myers Leonard. Um, so Houston, Ooh. I think if we're looking at anybody here, it's probably Dame at 92, TJ McConnell out, tweaks uh, Philly's projections a little bit, makes Bayless a little bit more interesting. Um, what's Dame's salary been doing? Uh, it's been relatively steady. Sarge is questionable, apparently. This is all news coming in on the fly, so it's hard to really react. But I think that Ed Davis deserves the look, also at minimum salary. So if we get word that he might be playing, you know, we're going to have the Spates at minimum salary, well, Bryn Forbes at minimum salary, Ed Davis at minimum salary. It's going to be a weird one. I mean, Ed Davis... Just if you know he's going to get minutes, it could be interesting. I have him in for 24. Uh, Aminu is 2,500. So he, yeah, 2,500. Aminu is 5,000, needs 25 points. Um, if he gets 30 plus minutes, that's going to be a good look for him. Dame needs 45. He's been there in his last two. I will look at Dame here. McCollum at 6,600. Is he dropped? Yeah, he's slowly going down. I didn't like the matchup for him, but now I need to try to look at it. He's 33. He has not done that in four straight. Um, no, I'm not going to look at CJ right now. He's going to pop up a lot on the optimizer, though. I might need to tweak him a bit. So yeah, I think it's just Dame here until we get a little bit more news. Um, but it brings like Noah Vonley and Ed Davis into play just because of a minutes perspective. And then Houston is obviously going to be um, a very interesting look. I'm just putting James Harden in here right now because he's probably going to be the first guy I lock. I probably won't even have to lock him to be perfectly honest. He's going to lock himself. Um, and it's just because of the gigantic gap between him and the rest of the shooting guard crop today um he becomes the place that naturally gets paid up not to mention they're playing the blazers and uh, it's not like there's some offense or defensive juggernaut whatever their defensive stats are this year are bullshit okay i'm gonna like uh harden and paul i think Yeah, let's look at Harden and Paul, and then we'll uh, we'll toss these in the optimizer and see what comes out. Even though it's not going to be 
very good, I don't think. Harden at 11-2, so he needs 56. Clearly he can get there. I love it. Um, Paul needs 43. I'm fine with that as well. It's just a great game. 113 implied total. It's first on the night. Uh, I, I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Eric Gordon needs 24. Um, he's done it once in his last five. I'm going to avoid that for now. I can see not hating it in the long run. So there we go. Uh, there's the short list for right now. Obviously subject to change. There's a ton of news that's going to be uh, important throughout this day. Um, I highly suggest tuning in at 6 o'clock for the Live Before Lock show. Yeah, it's a, it's a show now. If we can get 250 people, I'm going to call it a show. It's going to be um, it's going to be a fun one tonight. Lots going on. Might have some cocktails. Wife is going to be uh, in Charlotte. So let's copy these projections in. Let's hit this optimizer and see what spits out. It's going to be a lot of guys that are not on this list. There's a lot of like uh, low tier, high value per dollar guys, and I don't think that's going to be the direction that I'm going. But I'm fairly confident that James Harden is going to show up here a lot. So let's do 50. Up to 5% on a randomness. Let's dance. Shazam! I like it so far. Ooh, Trevor Booker available to make his debut tonight. It's interesting. I like a lot of what just popped at the top. Like I said, Harden in 35 of the 50 lineups. Kablamo. Russ in 75%. Boom again. Uh, Mo Spates, as we knew, in 49 of 50. Don't have a choice. And I loved Rudy Gay. So I just want to see what those four guys locked, what we look like. Ooh, Saric closer to doubtful. Hoi. I, it might be a Trevor Booker night. Holy shit. He might just have to play. Not an adjustment I can make on the fly, but um, I like a lot of what's popping up here. It's going to take some adjustments. Like I said, so much of this news is going to, is going to change things. Like, if Saric is out as well, that matters. You know, if we can find out that Trevor Booker is starting, that's interesting. Um... You know, Adrian Payne might get minutes, so it's hard to dive into anything right now. But I will say, barring anything ridiculous, James Harden is 100% a lock tonight. There aren't any other options at shooting guard that are as tasty as him. That sounds weird. I don't mean physically tasty. You know what I mean. And here's what I mean when I say that. And the pre this is where the preference ranking comes into play the most. So if I sort this by preference, the gap between Harden and everyone else is huge. Huge. 1.8. Then we get here and it's, you know, a cluster. A cluster. A, a very big cluster. So this is the place where you get the biggest value gap at the top of the heap. So that's why Harden ends up showing up there as much as he does. And it's a great matchup, and it's all of those awesome things. So that's when Harden becomes Lockie McLockerson. And then the more $3,500 guys we can get, the more that we can get Westbrook as well. And I don't know who else. I don't know. Everybody. People that are people that are on my short list. So that's it. I've been rambling long enough. I feel weird doing this at the time that I'm doing it. Live before lock, 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, be there or be square. If you like the video, like it. If you don't like the video, like it anyway. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, check me out on Twitter. Check out my website. Check out my Patreon. Check out uh, the Reddit DFS Sports Group. Um, Projections are going to be moving to my website, I'd say, starting on Monday. Um, 
they are live for DraftKings right now. If you want to go take a look at them at joshengelman.com slash DraftKings. Uh, it's a real, this is exactly what's what I've got out there right now. This is what it will look like moving forward. Um, you know, searchable, filterable across all of the information you could export to Excel or CSV, copy it directly, whatever you want to do. Um, it's all here. This is this is up to date as of everything that I loaded, um, you know, prior to the video. I'm going to try to keep it up to date now, but uh, stick to the projection spreadsheet until you hear otherwise from me. That's it. That's all I've got. I will see you guys tonight at 6.